All right, I was scavenging some parts off of a PC board, and I've got a bunch of inductors. And uh, these are really interesting ones. They have uh, ferrite or whatever it is all the way around them. And so they look like they're maybe quite uh, high in um, farads. But uh, in fact, these are only uh, 10 microhenries. Farads, did I just say farads? Microhenries. <laughs> And these are two, uh, 20 micro, 22 micro, 22 micro, uh, Henry's. And, um, this one says, uh, 220. So you might think, oh, that's 220 micro Henry's, but no, the zero is just how many decimal places. So it's 22 micro Henry's and these are 10 micro Henry's. Uh, so yeah, they're, they're, they're very interesting. Um, I believe the reason that they don't have much inductance is because they're uh, high current. So the gauge of the wire is quite large. So even though they look like a, a pretty stout inductor, there's not many turns in these things. And uh, they're nice and shielded too, so they don't splatter everywhere. You know, their RF radiation doesn't get everywhere. So they're they're nice, nice design. On that PC board were, were also these. Now these are common mode chokes. Uh, I don't want to get these. Some of these are special here. I've wired them specially. So um, these are common mode chokes. So they have parallel winding so two wires get wrapped at this at the same time and they have two different color wires which is nice they have a kind of a copper color wire and a more of a reddish wire and so you can tell which one goes where but uh, these two are common and these two are common so um, let's go ahead and, and get a, a device here and we'll measure one it's always hard to get the glare off these things so uh, we'll set it here to inductance so it doesn't have to search so we're going to measure inductance uh, we'll grab one of these uh, 10 microhenry uh, inductors. We'll we'll hook it up to the to the clip leads here and let's see what it measures. There you go, 9.66. So um, let's take a look at these little uh, common mode chokes though, and let's see what they do. So uh, again, they are two separate windings and they're parallel to one another. And this side is measuring 117. And if I move over to the other side, it should measure almost the same. Okay, 117. So common mode chokes are great for getting rid of common mode noise. So if you have noise both on the signal and the ground and you run it through here, it will get rid of it. If you only had an adductor on the signal side, noise could still get through the ground. So common mode chokes are, are very popular in certain designs. The output of switching regulators usually have a common mode choke on them. Um, and the input to an instrument, your AC line coming into an instrument often goes through a common mode choke before it gets to the power supply. Um, so yeah, that's really interesting. Now I did some experiments here. So uh, maybe 117 wasn't enough. So let's put two back to back, all right? We'll run it through one and then we'll run it through the other and we should get double, right? So 117, 117 should be about what, 234? 230, okay? So 230 on that side. Let's measure the other side. Um, And that looks good too. Now, if you were going to use two back to back, you wanted to really cut something down. You should probably have a capacitor, an inductor, a capacitor, then an inductor, and then another capacitor. Let me let me draw that. Uh, so if you have an uh, these common mode choke here, right? You're coming in. Well, you should probably put a oops, put a capacitor, capacitor ground here, a capacitor to ground here. That would make a really nice, really nice filter. And then if you're going to piggyback them, then, then, then do it again. And so I would use them like that. Now let's say that you have one of these, uh, little devices that you just pulled out of a, out of a PC board and you say, ah, well, what I want to do is, uh, I need more inductance, but I don't need the, I don't need the uh, common thing. So I'm going to, I'm going to take one, right? And then I am going to then run it through, through it twice. I go in this way and then run it, run it back this way. And so I should get double, double the amount. Okay. And so here we go. 
uh, we have two. Now I needed to rearrange the camera to get rid of that glare again. Okay, so here's the one. We're going to go in and through, and then we're going to go back out the other way, and let's measure the inductance. We should have what well, we had 117, and so multiply that by 2, we should have 234. All right, so let's look for 234. Point 0.3 microhenries. It went from 117 to point 0.3. Okay, we must have a we must have a bad connection here. So let me measure through. All right, through we have 102. Okay, so this one's a little less, but it's 102. And on this side we have 103. So 103 plus 102 should give us 205. So let's go through it again. I got my connections good this time, so we'll make sure we're making good contact. Oops. And this thing just timed out. It's trying to save its battery. Let me go back to inductance. There we go. 0.2 microhenries. We're getting nothing. It's not working at all. Okay, so let's take a look at our picture here. Well, we have a field, right? When electricity goes through a coil, it generates a field. And then it goes through that coil again. If the field is exactly opposite phase, they will cancel one another out. Whatever field this one makes will cancel whatever one this one makes. Whatever one this makes will cancel out whatever one this makes. And so you can't wire it up like this. It will not... It will not work, okay? So a lot of times you'll see little dots on schematics and that tells you the type of winding. So you definitely don't want to hook them up this way. So let's hook them up the other way, which will be like this. We'll go through it and then we'll go through it the same direction, okay? And so if this the dots on the windings, it will look something like, something like that. So that should work out good. Uh, so let's see here, so here, here is a one that I've wired up that way. So first let's measure one side. Okay, so one side, get my camera back ranged again. All right, so one side is measuring 118. Okay, great. And let's measure the other side. And the other side should be about 118. Oops, let's see here, let me short it up. My, my, leads, are, my leads are crossed, I'm sorry. There we go. Okay, 119. So 118 on one side, 119 on the other. So should we have about, what, 240? Okay, 240. When we go through both ways? All right, let's go through both ways. 480. <laughs> Bonus. <laughs> it's twice as good as it should be. Um, yeah, that's amazing. Uh, surprising result. So comment down below if you expected this, if you've seen this, or if it's new to you. Uh, yeah, uh, seems like uh, seems like this way is a superstar. All right, just a quick little video for the day, and uh, get you thinking. Why does it do that? And have you seen that in the literature? And uh, is there a formula for that of how these inductances add up so much?